The Ric Flair Show. My name is Ric Flair. Woo! Woo! To be the man, you got to beat the man. And I'm saying, woo, right here, I'm the man. The 16-time world champion. Woo! Back behind the mic and telling it like it is. Woo! If you're not carrying the big gold, you're second best no matter what you tell yourself. I'm the best. Y'all playing catch-up ball. To the nature boy. And now, your hosts of the Ric Flair Show, Ric Flair and Conrad Thompson. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, back for another week with the Ric Flair Show. It's none other than the nature boy, Ric Flair, 16 times world champion, and my co-host, who I mean my legendary co-host, after spending the weekend in New York and in Indianapolis and signing over 1,200 autographs in three days, believe me, the world is aware of Conrad Thompson. <laughs> Entrepreneur, owner of the Conradison, which I have had to show many pictures of this past week, and the second wealthiest man in Alabama, Behind Dr. James Andrews, Conrad, how are you? Well, I'm working on uh, working my and, way up and, the list. And, and, and lover extraordinary. Oh my gosh! Oh, I'm going to get in trouble today. I can already that, tell. That's the rumor. Well, you know, I can't argue that rumor. I'm going to go with it. I'm going to let it go for this week. Let it go. Hey, take it, man. <laughs> well, I'm excited, man. We've got a big time guest on. Wow, uh, do we ever? Yeah. Tension, man. Tension in the air. It really is in the air. We've got the the one and only Michael P.S. Hayes, the original Freebird, the innovator. He's back with us for round three here on the Ric Flair Show. But let's get started with our first segment on the show. It's something we like to call the Figure Four Top Stories. It's still brought to you by the Space Mountain T-shirt, available now at RicFlairShow.com's online store. Just click the Merch tab at the top of the page, and you'll be styling and profiling in your very own Space Mountain T-shirt. It's the oldest ride in the longest line, and these days, everybody's talking about Space Mountain. Grab your shirt today, RicFlairShow.com. Click on the Merch tab. Let's get into it, Rick. Top story number one, coming off a big pay-per-view this weekend, No Mercy on the West Coast, and uh, coming out of it on Raw, we have the announcement that we're going to have something new. It's the very first women's hell in a cell and your daughter's going to be in there. What's your thoughts? I know. Well, I spoke with her today. She's excited. You know, she's, uh, that's the way she lives. She wants to be in the middle of it. And, uh, if that's something new that nobody else has done, you know, she's more than happy to be part of it. And, uh, we're really looking forward to it. And I expect, uh, that match to be as good as the other matches they've had. And, uh, God don't, God knows. I mean, Sasha Banks and Charlotte have had some phenomenal matches. Actually, I think some of the best in history. Yeah. And it's, I've been around a long time. It's hard to argue that they're, uh, they're not setting a different pace and a different tone than maybe what existed in women's wrestling in the United States over the last decade or so. But, what do you expect to be different about their Hell in a Cell versus all the other Hell in a Cells we've seen in the past? Well, I don't know because, you know, I'm not there like I am, but I just know that uh, every time they put them together, uh, they work out something new. So, I mean, would, I'd be, I'd be, um, I'd be, I, I mean, I just think it, that everybody will be overwhelmed again. They'll come up with something. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, she may put Sasha on the table and do a moonsault off the top of the cage. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I don't put it, I don't put it beyond her. And I don't, I'm not sure if Sasha should take that or not, but <laughs> they, 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 they pushed it. They pushed the gamut. They pushed the limit. I mean, they, they've done some stuff, uh, that, uh, that raised her edge off the second rope and, uh, into a, uh, have a Corona. I mean, it's just, they've done some phenomenal stuff. So, um, who just say it won't happen again? I mean, it's going to be tough to follow the corkscrew moonsault, but you know her. She's, uh, as you know, you've gotten to know her real well. She is aggressive and wants to be considered as competitive as the boys. So that's where she's at. The high spot of today's show is you calling a hurricane Rana a have a Corona, because from now on, I'm going to refer to that move as the have a Corona. That well, is... I've always, I've always called it that. I like beer. 
I just love that. How did I not know that? That's amazing. You've never heard that before? No, that's great. Yeah, I'm having a corona. <laughs> well, uh, let's talk I've been about... I've that. I, ever since I took one from... Uh, Mysterio? From Mysterio at uh, Panama City, I said I just took a half a, half a corona. <laughs> <laughs> that is the highlight of the show. I don't know that we'll beat that the rest of the show, but we're going to try. Uh, top story number two. I got a little ahead of myself on story number one. No mercy this weekend, the left coast and Dolph Ziggler comes up with maybe the second biggest or the biggest win of his career. He put his career on the line against the Miz. He walks away the intercontinental champion. Did you have a chance to see the match? And what do you think this means? I, for I Dolph? did not see the match. Um, I actually did. I watched the, uh, the first match at the, uh, tag match. And I remember I had to catch a plane or not the tag match, but the, uh, three way with John and, uh, AJ and Ambrose and, uh, I had to catch a plane, but, um, man, what a, what a match they had, but I'm sure cause I've seen Dolphin and Miz go at it. I'm sure it was phenomenal. What did you, uh, it was, it was probably the match of the night. I thought it should have been in that last position. Uh, I know they started with the main event, but the last match to go on, you could argue should have been for the intercontinental title. Mm-hmm. W- what was your, uh, your opinion of them moving the main event to the opening match? Um, I just think that they're experimenting right now and trying to figure out, uh, you know, how to catch the audience and, and get their attention real fast. I mean, you know, you would have never seen that in the old days, but, um, it's just different now. And that match had a lot of, a lot of buzz on it. Um, you know, because of John's attempt to, uh, go for number 16. And, uh, as I predicted though, AJ is in a good place and it's just, I just think it's hard to, to break the momentum um, you know, they do enough of that now with making changes and, uh, Dolph was long overdue. I mean, I'm not, I'm jumping around here, but I'm happy for him. And, uh, you know, it doesn't take anything off the Mrs. Buzz. He's done a great job and he and his wife are good out there in the ring together. So it's a, it was a great, great card. I did see the Orton match was good. Um, big fan of Randy's of course, and Bray Wyatt. So, um, it was a hell of a show. No, it was a hell of a show. Uh, I, I really thought it was um, yet another feather in the cap for SmackDown mm-hmm. uh, as they try to you know, distinguish themselves as not the number two player. I feel like they've been putting on some real A shows lately. <laughs> yeah, they sure have. Top story number three. It's not all good news this week. Uh, Paige has been suspended again, this time for 60 days. Uh, this comes on the heels of a 30-day suspension. Lots of stuff circling here. Uh, how do you hope this winds up for Paige and the WWE? Well, personally, I like Paige, but I'm not privileged to know. If I were there like I was four months ago, I'd know more about it. But I'm I'm on the outside looking in, and I don't – when I'm speaking to Charlotte, we, we're not talking about wrestling all the time, and I'm certainly not going to ask her on her time off what's going on with Paige. Um, sure. But – um. Paige has a lot of talent. She's young. I hate to see her throw it away. So whatever is going on, um, I hope the best for her. Um, I think that uh, she and Charlotte had a good run, and it was fun for me to be out there. And I hate to see her you know, do damage to her career at such an early age, at such an early time in life. I have heard that she has a neck injury that is potentially an issue too, so I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I hope she gets to feeling better. I hope they work it out. I think that uh, she and the WWE are better together than they are apart, and I hope that uh, they can patch this situation up. But something that has been patched up is top story number four. So the news comes out this week. It looks official. Goldberg is coming back to the WWE. We haven't seen Goldberg in a long time inside a WWE ring, uh, and it looks like they're positioning a rematch for Lesnar Goldberg. Uh, there, I think everybody remembers WrestleMania 20 was their first match back in 2004. What's your thoughts on bringing Goldberg in, and what do you think about Brock Lesnar as a potential opponent? Well, um, you know, I like Bill a lot. I just talked to him the other day because he gave me a shout out on uh, Sports Center. Uh, he was wrong. I was I was 59. I wasn't 49 <laughs> when I wrestled Sean, but he, he said I was able to pull it off. I'll tell you my truth. The truth is, I mean, I think Bill would be a nice addition. But, I mean, when you've been out of the business as long as he has, here's the same deal. You wrestling Brock Lesnar, brother. You know, I, it's not a way to start out. <laughs> I, it just isn't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
Uh, I mean, not to build fragile by any means, but <clears throat> when you've been away that long, <clears throat> when your body hasn't been in the rain, you know, like I say all the time, um, you know, um, time off is a uh, wrestler's worst enemy. And he's been off a long time. And then to jump in the ring with Brock, who's in peak condition all the time, um, because of his dual roles, either MMA or professional wrestling, he stays in top shape. Um, and I, I don't know that Bill has. I mean, Bill looks great, but I haven't seen seen him in the ring. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's a tough call. I think it'll be interesting for the fans. Um, but... Uh, I'm glad it's not me getting in there with Brock. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you've mentioned something. I've been there and done that, man. <laughs> you've, uh, you've mentioned something to me about uh, the time off before, that if you're working four, five, six days a week, you kind of de- develop a little bit of a callus to the, the rigors of the ring, whereas if you're working more infrequently, once a month, twice a year, once a quarter, uh, you really feel it the next day a lot more than if you were doing it five or six oh, days. Mo- most or... definitely. And there's no way that you can practice. Does that make sense? You yeah. can't practice. So when you have to go live to get back in ring shape, and there's no, I mean, there's, not, there's no piece of cardiovascular equipment. There's no workout that can duplicate going live in the ring, especially when you feel the lights, the pressure, the audience, know the whole world's looking at you. I mean, it's a lot of pressure. And uh, you got to be ready for it. And, uh, I mean, Bill's played, you know, pro football, and he was a star at Georgia uh, in SEC um, football, which is big. And he was a star with us, but he never had to wrestle that long. That wasn't the role he was in. And, you know, they go out there with these main events at WrestleMania, and they put 20 minutes on those guys. I mean, you know, and Brock, you know, like I think the, the Brock had to do 28 minutes last WrestleMania. No, no, the one beat that, that was the one with Roman and yeah, uh, yeah, two years ago. Yeah, two years ago, that was twenty eight minutes long. Brock said, you know, he 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 was worried about blowing up, but of course he didn't. Um, but that's hard. I mean, it's hard to do if you're not used to it. Well, um, you were talking about uh, hard to do it if you're not used to it. We've been doing these shows for a while now, and maybe once every eighteen <coughs> months you get sick. What the hell's going on with the cough, man? Well, I got a cold. It's an even Superman, right? I, I, there must be some kryptonite hidden around her, her Wendy's house here. Because I've been down for a week, man. It's brutal. Well, got to cut down on my drinking and everything. I mean, just. It's cut down on the nation? Well, I haven't nation a while either. Even in New York, I was sick. Remember, I told you. Well. I, and I actually think that um, when you're doing that, you know, you're signing massive at these Comic Cons, all the people are coming in, everybody's. Sick, <laughs> you're gonna, you're, gonna but you're bound to pick up something along the way, and so I got one. But um, I feel good just coughing, uh, but it's not from loving a woman who wasn't clean, right? No, no, please. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. Oh, well, hey, if you get to start bragging about the Conradison loving, I get to finish with that. Let's get to our main course on the other side of the break. <laughs> the man you really want to hear from, as long as Nate can make it. Michael P.S. Hayes will be right back on the Ric Flair Show. All right, I get tweets all the time wanting to know how can we support the show. Well, listen, we appreciate all the support you show on social media. Follow us at Ric Flair Show. But the real way to throw some support behind the show, support our sponsors. And how about at the same time, look good while you're doing it. We're talking about a Ric Flair Show t-shirt. Go ahead and go to RicFlairShow.com. Right at the top of the page, you'll see the merch link. Click that merch link, and it's going to take you to the online store. There's 12 RicFlairShow.com shirts to choose from. That's right, 12. Everything from a Vote for Flair shirt, a Space Mountain oldish ride shirt, a Woo shirt that looks like a Hooter shirt that's going to be awesome on your hot wife, the Flair Chopped shirt. It looks like the old Andre handprint, except it says Woo. Everybody knows whenever you chop somebody, the entire crowd is going to go Woo. And you're going to go Woo when you see these shirts. Go check it out right now. RickFlairShow.com. 11 of these 12 are only nineteen ninety nine. You pay a few bucks extra for that Vote for Flair shirt, but it's worth it. Stimulate your economy. Stimulate the show's economy. And support the folks who bring you the show for free every single week. It's RickFlairShow.com. And click on the merch tab at the top. Uh, yeah, this week on MLWRadio.com. Out now, Goldberg is coming to Raw. 
Page is gone from WWE for 60 days? The WWE Network flirting with Ring of Honor and TNA content? Find out all the latest scoops when Mr. St. Laurent teams up with Conrad Thompson for a special packed edition of the flagship podcast, MLW Radio. On Thursday, join wrestling historian Matt Farmer as he talks Memphis wrestling territory on the VIP-only History in the Making podcast with Court Bauer. Finish off the week with MSL and Sullivan in the morning talking the business of pro wrestling and what really happened behind the scenes in WCW back in the day. Then learn all about the classic WWF television series, Prime Time Wrestling, on Something to Wrestle with Bruce Pritchard. Plus much more. The world of MLW Radio never stops. Go to MLWRadio.com and binge on pro wrestling talk now. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Woo! The Ric Flair Show. Don't miss a minute of The Ric Flair Show. Subscribe on iTunes now. Woo! Nature Boy Ric Flair, the heavyweight champion of the world. Custom made clones. And any woman in the world I want. Just like that. And now, more Ric Flair. P.S. What's up, man? Hey, what's up, Nate? Hey, thank you for taking the time. Ladies and gentlemen, as we talked about briefly a couple minutes ago, we got a couple minutes with Michael P.S. Hayes today. The last time we had him on the show, we were we were contemplating his induction into the Hall of Fame, and uh, which both uh, I participated in, and Conrad uh, was in the audience. Uh, it may have been the greatest Hall of Fame induction of all time. Absolutely. I felt My- Michael actually blew up twice rehearsing <laughs> it during the day. <laughs> so I can imagine the third time the lights were bright and everything, but, uh, man, that was a bad street. Mike, that was a phenomenal, phenomenal event. And uh, the recognition of buddies and uh, um, Terry. uh, Terry's kids and then the families and everybody, it was, it was, uh, it should have been on last, you know, I had to really dig. Even though Sting it was very well received, I had to dig and really look for something entertaining <laughs> to to go out there after you guys. So, congratulations, man! This guy is well, a vice you. president with the WWE. You know how difficult a job that is. Time demanding. Well, Jesus do. Christ! <laughs> I know how difficult it is. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm letting the fans know. I mean, it ain't a picnic. Oh. No, it, it's not. But you know what, man? It's I'm really blessed to be able to go to work and you get a check doing something that you love and you probably do for nothing. Um, you know, the fact that I've been able to stay very relevant uh, behind the scenes and, and be involved in some of the, the greatest matches and storylines for the last 20-plus years with WWE a- after my ring career, I don't know if it gets any better than that, you know? I mean, it, 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 you know, it keeps you on your toes because these kids are a lot different than we were, but... Um, and you have to motivate them differently. We uh, we had different ways of motivating ourselves. <laughs> None that are allowed now. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's you know life goes on, life changes, and um, you know you change with it. So you know I'm gonna you know address the white room and the elephant, um, or the elephant in the white room, whatever that's saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, here's the deal. Uh, as far as Bret Hart and his comments uh, that came out last week, um, I have never, ever had one tense, bad word uh, situation with Bret Hart. So I, I really don't know what motivated that or where that came from. I've always got along with him, uh, his family. You know, I work with Natalie a lot. Uh, you know, work closely with him on his match with uh, Vince in uh, back, I think it was WrestleMania 26. Um, and, you know, so, you know, first things first is, believe it or not, um, I feel that Brett is entitled to his, his opinion, as we all are. I also agree with some of what Brett said. And by that, I mean, no, we never did draw any money in WWF, WWE, because I don't, you know, first of all, we weren't there long enough. I don't know anybody that draws money in two or three weeks. Um, but on top of that, uh, I wouldn't disagree with his feelings of the people that he named that should be in the Hall of Fame. However, that's kind of where the agreement ends and the disagreement begins. Because, 
you know, we did draw and do squat everywhere we went that we hung our hat. And and I'm proud to say that because there's not a lot of people that can say that they actually went in and popped a territory, much less multiple territories. And for those that don't know what it means to, to, to pop a territory, it doesn't mean to be on big cards and, you know, be a part of a spectacular it means that you go in and significantly raise the attendance before you were there. And, you know, we were fortunate enough to do that. Of course, the reason we were able to do that, we were blessed with some really over baby faces to work with. You know, Junkyard Dog, Tommy Rich, Dusty, um, whose birthday was yesterday, by the way, and, uh, and of course, the Von Erics. But, you know, that say we didn't do squats right you know that's just ridiculous but what really you know what really bugged me and this is so uncalled for is you know call you know especially to everybody who's here no longer to call them a bunch of pill heads and and drunks and um you know why why go there what 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 did that accomplish i mean it's just it's i don't know if and i don't know what happened to brady he used to be a really really nice man and it just seems as time goes on that isn't the case anymore and he seems to be bitter and he wants to lash out at anything and everybody um and and i don't get that he was blessed with such a career such a family such a great life enjoy it you know i mean i don't know why be bitter well that's what we said too and uh, i'm i'm not going to disagree with you altogether but I would never put Rick Rude in the same class as the Freebirds. Sorry, I mean I just well, I'll, um, that's not a hurtful thing to say. That's an opinion. Um, right. And if anybody, if anybody, I've seen uh, and had to go through and work with Rude impaired in the ring. I'm sure everybody knows about it. Uh, when he got on the pills, he, he was very difficult to work with and not safe. So I could probably work with you between you and Terry and Buddy 150 times and never saw you impaired in the ring. Does that make sense? And Rick, yeah, Rick well, would get no. bad. I mean, it, Rick would get bad, and, and they, they gave him the title for a while, and it was really, it would, it just, it's why Hogan wouldn't work with him. I mean, if you think about it, he never wrestled for the WWE title. I mean, that, that, I don't know if you ever considered that, Mike. Well, no, you know, I wasn't up there at the time, so I, I don't know a lot what went on in the mid-80s and late-90s. So now that you mentioned it, um, I don't recall him going for the title. He, I can tell you, because Hogan, when Hogan came with WCW, and I, this is not about Rick Root. I'm just saying that um, yeah, I, I'm I saying that I don't see him in the same light as I see you guys, and I am qualified to say that because I wasn't popping the territories like you guys were but I was working a lot with you in those territories. I would come in and out, and I saw the success that the Freebirds brought to Dallas, and I saw it in Atlanta, and I saw it in Ohio, and I saw it in Louisiana for Bill Watts. I mean, and Brett was up in Calgary, and then that was it. And I think yeah. he had a little a little run in Japan, but he wasn't wrestling Jumbo and Tenru and those guys. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, I, I don't know what's wrong either. I just asked that question the other day. Because he's always, he's always a hunter's ass. And I don't get that either. Yeah, you know, I don't, I, 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 you know. To you, you, like, you, have to be, you have to be aware of that. You've heard of that before, right? What's that? That he's always on hunter's ass. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like a hunter, hunter can't lace his boots and, and, yeah. and that. And, I mean, you know, it, you know, I don't want to turn this into a pissing contest because then I'm, I'm laying in the No, no, it's not. I, when I would just, um, I was... Giving you my opinion of what I thought, you know, uh, no, I just, and, and, I, and I, I know, that. I know where you guys stand in the business and I'm, and I, and I won't let that go. I mean, no one's going to knock Michael Hayes and the free words. Uh, well, it's not I, even I, open I, for debate. That, so that, that I, just I, it. That, and, and I love you for it. And, and, you know, it's, it's just, some of it is so far off base. I mean, Brett knows why Owen is not in the hall of fame. And right. It has nothing to do with the fabulous free birds. I can tell you, I can tell you that, um, you know, and, and the other guys that aren't in, whether you agree with Brett's uh, opinion or not, he's entitled to it, but the Freebirds don't have anything to do with them not going
coming in or not being in as of yet. And, you know, we didn't even politic for this. It obviously made a lot of sense. You're in Dallas, Texas. They hold most of the attendance records. Hmm, sounds like a match made in heaven, if you ask me. Or well, and, and, and the same could apply for Atlanta, where I was disappointed that they didn't put you in. But um, and, and, I actually thought it worked out better in Dallas, and, you know, and, and it did. It was just fabulous. Um, who, who else did Brett recommend should be in? I didn't hear all Demolition that. Demolition made the list. Oh, okay. The Demolition, the Ruggios, and, uh, and Rude, and Owen, I believe. Okay. Um, and yeah, I, I would just, I, 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 I kind of stopped it after I saw the large, the shot about you. I didn't really look at it that carefully, but yeah, yeah. Conrad, who knows? I, we asked, we asked uh, Bruce Mitchell uh, the same question. And I think it, it's a lot of a lot of it. It comes from the concussion issue and and just being, uh, you know, you get lonely sometimes. Me, I, you know, when I get lonely, I just, you know, I do my thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I go. <laughs> yeah. Hey, sweetie, get me another I, drink. <laughs> hey, hey, I go. I go to Conrad's, <laughs> or, or I meet you at Lake Lanier. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was awesome. What we got to do that every July Fourth. Oh, uh, I've been trying to get you to come back. So you, first of all, you tell me at noon. I'll call you at three, and then sure enough, two o'clock in the morning. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Probably sleeping. I just got up, right? Jesus. I, I never could tell time well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got him to come out there one time, Conrad, and it was brutal. Two solid days of great time, rock and roll. Weather was nice. But it was awesome. I can't, I can't get him to come back again. <laughs> well, I heard some world records were set that weekend. So, Well, you know, it dep- that's grading on a curve. Because- <laughs> 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 well, you know, at the Lake Lanier Lodge, we won't, we won't call that like, uh, let me see, um, what was the club in the old days down, L- Rupert's or the, where's the place where we went to see your girlfriend share? Uh, <laughs> well, there, there was plenty, like there was the Crystal Palace in Atlanta. Yeah, of course. Uh, there was the see, Lime Light. <laughs> hey, you see, Michael Hayes, he'll, he'll drop share and then he doesn't get any crap. What's the deal? Well, I'm good. I mention a name when I'm getting what? lynched. <laughs> well, well, hold on a second. Well, Cher did win an Academy Award, didn't she? Huh? I huh? said Cher did win an Academy Award, didn't she? Yeah, she sure did. And you guys have a lot in common, it's, or so it seems. Wow. <laughs> Mike, Michael was responsible for straightening her teeth. <laughs> oh, my, God. oh my gosh. <laughs> Let's move along. Okay. Let, let's do that. Let's do that. And, you know, just, just to just kind of just close up the Brett thing. Um, <coughs> What's that? Again, Terry, but, uh, so just to close, you know, the window on the Brett thing. I mean, Terry and Buddy aren't here. I don't think, I mean, I mean, I know he wouldn't have said that to their face if they were here. So, you know, if you're not going to say something to somebody's face, uh, let's, let's just keep it to yourself. It had been just as easy to say, I'm a little disappointed in the WWE Hall of Fame. I think... People that are in there should have had a career in the WWE, and here's who I think should be in. Bam. And even if you wanted to say, I think they deserve to be in more than the Freebirds, man, I'm fine with that. You start going through the drunks and the you know the pill heads, and, and a lot of that information is wrong. I told most of these stories on the JBL uh, Legends program you know, back in March. Andre the Giant never fired us, okay? He probably wanted to. He probably had every reason to uh, because he had a lot to do with us going to New York. And, you know, we screwed that up. But nonetheless, Andre didn't fire us. We walked out. Vince called me. I went back. Buddy went back. <coughs> shots we had. Then on the way to Japan, which was already booked, I called Dave Wolf, and he said, Vince is not going to hire you back. He can't trust you. And that was that. But it was Vince that fired us. It wasn't Andre. And plus the town Brett's talking about, and we can get them all screwed up because we're all in so many, wasn't Providence. It was Youngstown, Ohio. Well, I didn't hear all that. It didn't matter. I yeah. just, I'm, I'm like you, Mike. You know, it's just like you just you can either, you know, here's what bothers me, is you're going to have to have to see Brett at WrestleMania and that, you know? And why should there ever be an uncomfortable minute? Does that make sense? Well, I mean, you know, like Brett and I talk, and we corrected things, and I mean, I never said shit about Brett, 
but he used to crack on me all the time. Okay. You know, so I, I never paid attention to it because I thought the right. hell, how do you crack on me? Does that make sense? What have I done? Um, yeah. Well, you except know, go to work right. every day. Right. But it, anyway, it's all good. Yeah. But, but you know, like the vendetta with, with Seth Rollins, there, you can't find anybody in the locker room that would not want to work with Seth Rollins. Exactly. Nobody. And, and, and ask John Cena what happened with the nose thing. John will tell you it was my fault. Um, Sting had this perennial neck problem that he's of course years of wrestling. Uh, and, and then the thing with, uh, Finn Balor, um, Finn, put, you know, you're supposed to take that thing on your shoulders, on your back. Finn put his arm back there to brace it. And there it went. And lo and mm-hmm. behold, when they, the, the operation took so much longer because of all the wear and tear and how messed up his shoulder was to begin with for 15 years of wrestling. Yeah, but but that's all Seth Rollins' fault. So, oh, oh, did Brett go off on Seth too? Oh my God, yeah. I didn't know that. See, I, that, I, you're bringing. I had no idea. No, and, that most and, definitely you know, wasn't Seth's fault. God, he's he's a God, he's a tremendous talent. And Steve, it's an example of what I was talking about earlier uh, about Bill coming back. We we're discussing Bill coming back, right? And you right. know, when you've been off a long time. And, and we know it, Mike, and if you haven't, you know, been in that position, <clears throat> you're off for a couple months, much less 10 years, you're going to get in the ring, you're going to wrestle Gold, or, uh, Brock Lesnar the first time around, ah, good luck with that. <laughs> no, it, and that's just the way it is. Your body isn't used to it, and Brock is a whole different can than Spear and Ric Flair. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Correct? Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean... Oh, oh, my God. Brock is an animal. I mean... I, yeah, I mean, I, I just don't think Bill is physically going to be be up for that myself. I mean, it might look good on paper. God, because Brock is oh. ten times more aggressive now than last time when he wrestled Bill. Does that make sense? And oh, actually, no, Brock, it, Brock has become a hell of a worker, I think. Yeah, I don't know that he's not <laughs> ten times a better athlete than he was back then because he's smarter. Right. You know what I mean? And, yeah. You know, that was a saying we've had in our business for years is that you learn to not work harder but work smarter. And, and yeah. then you learn to not do so many crazy things that you don't need to do when you can do something a little less and get more mileage out of it. And and Brock has learned how to do that. Um, and he's having a good time. You know, he wasn't having a good time when he was young and doing it constantly in a full-time schedule. But uh, Yeah, but it, still, it, Mike, at the end of the day, the T-shirt, and it's all over everywhere. He sells a T-shirt, Suplex City. Whoever is going to work with Brock Lesnar, whether he's gotten smarter, he, he's not going to change his style, and you're going to get Suplex. Not just oh, yeah, once, that, not that, twice, that, yeah, that, but at least ten times. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if Bill's ready digits. for that. <laughs> What's that? It, it, it's double digits for sure. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I mean, what was it, John Cena, 17 times? Good Lord. That was a lot. <laughs> Oh, I watched that way with at SummerSlam. I watched that with uh, um, Conrad. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I saw John the next day in Las Vegas. <laughs> he had a black eye. He was all banged up. He could hardly walk. <laughs> God, it didn't... <laughs> at the time that uh, we re- earlier in the year when we were in Montreal and uh, uh, Brock wrestled Harper, he was falling. Oh yeah. Like a... Well, you got him bonus. I remember you said, Carano, <laughs> bonus Harper. <laughs> Christ, he almost <laughs> killed Harper. <laughs> but, you know, Harper didn't complain. He goes out there and does it. That kid works hard. Yeah, it, he, and he's, he's a very good really talent. Good. He, he's back now, right? Yeah, he just came back, and it's it's, it's good to have him back. He is a, he's an amazing talent. Yeah. He really is. And if, speaking of amazing talents, I'm going to tell you, you, you will be in Boston, right? Well, of course I'm coming to Hell in a Cell, man. Are you kidding? Yeah, but I mean, when you think about Sasha and Charlotte. You, I know. It's, it's already an instant classic, the rivalry. I mean, think about it. It's, it's gone on for maybe a year. And, <laughs> and, and, and you don't judge it by gender. You just judge it by great matches. And now they're going to be in Hell in a Cell. And I just, I, I, it scares me a little bit to think what they're going to try to do. Well, I just talked to mine today. I mean, I mean to Charlotte, 
And man, yeah. it's number one, am I going to be there? Yes. I was told to be there today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and number two, she said, Dad, I'm going to do something no one's ever done. So I can only imagine what it'll be. Yeah. Now, if you come up with an idea for me to lay across the table and have her do a moonsault off the top of the cage for me, let me know in yeah. advance and I'll get sick and not make the event. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you can always move. <laughs> The corkscrew was too much move. for me. <laughs> God dang. <laughs> Good God. Four. I thought to myself, well, that's a hell of a move. And Sasha's got to help break the fall. God dang. Uh, right? Man. Yeah. Un- un- unbelievable stuff, man. Um, proud of those girls. Really am. And, and yeah, they, you know, they put Char- themselves in a very really unique good. position. I'm, I'm very proud of them, too. Yeah, you, you should be. And, and they're finally starting to feel comfortable where they're at. You know, there's yeah. a, lot of, a lot of pressure to be on the Raw. Not, not yep. SmackDown. In, in all my years here, the SmackDown crew always seems a little more loose. Um, they, they, they just do. And I, I don't know exactly why that is, but the Raw, and I'm not saying pressure is a bad thing because, you know, as you know, Rick, anytime you go out, Mm-hmm. There, there's good nerves and that, that will motivate you to have your best performance. I mean, I got to tell you, when we went out on stage in Dallas there, I had no idea if that was going to work or not. Uh, thank God once I caught my breath after the first two minutes and I saw that the crowd was into it, it's just one of those feelings like, all right, this this is going to work really well. Yeah, They're going to have some fun. Jimmy was trying to have fun, but he couldn't get his breath back. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, uh, Jimmy was amazing during that thing. And like you said, the kids, uh, that that's that that was fun because that's probably it for me as far as performing and uh, couldn't have gone out any better. Oh, Mike, it was better than good. It was, I mean, I watched the rehearsal and I told Connor and I said, wait till you see this thing that Michael's going to do tonight, man. And uh, it's funny, I was coming across town today and, uh, you know, it's funny how we cross and talk and all those things, but they were playing, baby's got her blue jeans on. <laughs> Michael, you just sing us one course of that. <laughs> baby's got her blue jeans on. No, it's go down in the corner, do the whole thing. <laughs> oh, no, Rick, I can't. I don't even remember the words. Well, just do the down in the corner and then say it. That's it. Down on the corner on the other side of town. <laughs> yeah, keep going. Well, I don't know the words. Great. Just say, baby's got her blue jeans Baby's on. got her blue jeans on. <laughs> oh, yeah, he, he sang that to every bartender at Lakeland there. <laughs> Why? That's not all I sang. <laughs> no, he's uh, he's had some performances at the Conradison, too. It's always... <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Listen, I've seen Michael Hayes. <laughs> We left Sabatino's in bad shape a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whose birthday it was, but we always saw a reason to celebrate. Michael and I don't do well together. <laughs> we do, but I mean, it's, it's always we always it, it, have fun. Let's put it like that. We always have fun, and then we're glad we're not going to do that for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh God, like, so I, much fun! I stuck out of Lake Lanier on that Sunday morning. I, when he called me to see me, I was already. In, uh, you know, Gainesville. Yeah, he was gone. I said, hey, I'll meet you. Let's go, man. Bloody Mary's. He said, I'm I'm already in Gainesville. Goodbye. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Jesus Christ. You're leaving a day early, man. Hey, so what, when are you I, going back? Are you, uh, you going to be? Oh, my God. This, I, I, this, I'm, I'm living Rick Flair's life here. I just, I left Saturday, went to Salt Lake and Sacramento. Then we did Oakland. And uh, last night was San Jose. I just flew back from San Francisco. I'll fly out in the morning to go to Orlando for NXT. Friday, I'm going to New Orleans to watch my nephew play football, um, high school ball. I'll fly home Saturday, then leave Sunday for Denver. For, uh, for Denver, right? Yeah. We got two. Where, where is SmackDown that, that day, that week? Same place. We're going to do two in Denver. Oh, cool. That's great. That's, great. That's yeah. a good market. You know, I... Uh, and then the, the next week is uh, Hell in a Cell in Boston, correct? Yes. Yeah, but you know what makes it even more dynamic for uh, Sasha no, no, and, it's, it's, and Charlotte? You know, Rick, we're, we're, we're in uh, Minneapolis and Green Bay, then we go to Boston. 
Would do better. Okay, well, if, if, in other words, but the 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 uh, Hell in the Cell is in Boston. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Which is Sasha's yeah. hometown, man. That'll be hot as hell. Oh, oh, oh yeah. my God! It's, I mean, I'm so excited for both of them because they I were to... screaming the other night for Sasha. It was great. Yeah. God. She and and she's starting to get relaxed, you know. Um, yeah. She knows she can do this, and she knows she's got nobody better to do it with than Charlotte. Yeah. And uh, and and you know, all our girls are really, really learning how to do it, man. Um, mm-hmm. they, they they really are, and they they're <clears> tough. <throat> I mean, they are tough. Yeah. Wait, what's wrong with Becky Lynch right now, Michael? Uh, she has a, a personal thing going on. Oh, that's all. Uh, nothing. Not an injury. Uh, it, well, it's kind of a personal injury, but she's okay and will. Okay, good. Uh, it's just a medical thing. It's not anything anybody needs to worry about. Was that fair? Oh, to I, say? I didn't know. I didn't. Well, I knew it wasn't a, a, a suspension. I knew. I. I just thought she no. got hurt. I didn't know about nope. it. So. Well, good. So, um, yeah, I you know. I, I know Becky well enough. I was going to actually call her today to see what's going on because I forgot to ask uh, Charlotte or Ashley. So she well, that's great, man. I mean, but you guys are on a roll. Yeah, uh, yeah. But it, it, everything's you know feeling good. But but yeah. I, I will say this about Becky: she tells the worst jokes. I mean, the the yeah. she tells Pat, worst jokes in hers. Pat Patterson. <laughs> worse than Pat Patterson. That's bad. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Pat, Pat. Have, you read, have you read Pat's book? I have not. Oh, you got to. It's awesome. Is it good? Oh, it's very good. And, you know, 90% of the stories he's already told you a million times. Right. Reading it in print, it's, it's fun. It makes you laugh all over again. And it's it's a good story. You know, you really get to see what he went through. And uh, and now he's finally, you know, got that monkey off his back, so to speak, and, and what what that's done for him. And, uh, yeah. And he's, and he's enjoying life in the twilight of his career and, and his life. Oh, I know. He loves – when I'm there and when, when Pat comes aboard, Pat and I sit there and watch all the matches. And, you know, it's, it's really fun from his perspective because having worked for Pat back in the 90s, um, you know, remember he told me – and this is a story I – he doesn't remember, <laughs> remember telling me this, but um, – and I'm sorry about my cold. Um, so I'm wrestling the Warrior in Winnipeg, right? Right. I'm the champion. And uh, the match, Mike, probably the second worst match I've ever had in my life. The first being when I wrestled the Warrior in Phoenix. And he dropped me <laughs> in my head. Okay. So I come back from the ring. The, the match, I, I knew it was just, it just, it was absolutely brutal. And Pat Patterson goes to me. That's the worst fucking match I've ever seen in my life. Ever seen a match. And I said, you're telling me, motherfucker, I was in it. I said, <laughs> Are you okay? Mm. This, this is our last show. <laughs> this, is our, this is our What's favorite. Hey, I'm glad I was able to go up. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it was absolutely terrible. I just couldn't have a match with him. Man, when the music stopped, it was like wrestling Jimmy Valiant. When the music stopped, the match was over. You know? <laughs> That's hilarious. That's what Arnie used hey, to wait, say. Wait. Arnie would have Jimmy Valiant give him the head, the, the, the turnbuckle head, the head to the turnbuckle on the top one, the second one all the way down to the third one. <laughs> I used to die. <laughs> what else could Jimmy do? He'd shake it like and lift his leg up like he was taking a leak at you. I mean, good Lord. Oh. Uh, <laughs> You saw it, Michael. You, you remember? Uh, oh yeah. yeah, I I stole a lot of stuff from him. <laughs> hey, I, I did. Just... When, when I first saw him, when I first saw him in the late seventies in Memphis, and he was over in Memphis too. Oh uh, yeah, I I saw the long blonde hair and the dark beard, and I went, okay, check. I'll take that. Yep. <laughs> I, I saw him doing music. Check. I will do that too. Um, yeah. And. Uh, you know, yeah, I took a lot from Jimmy. He was, uh, he didn't need to be a great wrestler. He was a great entertainer. Um, you know. Yeah, I know, but when you were the world champion and had to try and wrestle more than five or six minutes with him, it was, it was <laughs> brutal. Are you kidding me? It's like the same thing I tried. It was really hard because he was never over in Charlotte like he was Louisiana. But the junkyard dog, who was a great guy. Oh, oh, awesome. 
Jesus, I we're up in Ohio with with you guys, and I mean, I had to wrestle him in the title match. I remember Arn, those guys. I was I was so flipped at having to wrestle a dog every night that Arn went out and they got a white van and they put nut house on it, right? Or <laughs> no, they put uh, ice cream truck on it or something. I rolled it on the side. It was just brutal. I was so <laughs> flipped at trying to have a match with uh, with uh, dog man, the greatest guy in the world, but boy. You're trying to get more than 10 minutes out of him. It was brutal. In, in Louisiana, you could have 10 minutes of violence before he did anything. You know what I mean? But a little yeah. different up in Ohio. <laughs> he never had the quite the, quite the same buzz. Hey, the uh, the fact that you were able to carry me to an hour time limit, that brutal. <laughs> So, Hayes, while I got you, um, you know, I don't know what you can share or not share, but there's a lot of uh, heated opinions coming out of SummerSlam with the whole Lesnar-Orton deal. I don't know what you can share or not share, but can you shed any light on that and uh, all the talk that comes out of that match afterwards? Well, um, I can't shed a lot of light on it because that wouldn't be correct business. Uh, sure. In, hind- in hindsight, I don't think it should have gone on last. Um, but you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. Right. Uh, I will. T- I will tell you this: the rematch in um, in Chicago uh, a few weeks ago, because of course I was there. Where Brock goes, I go. Um, it was awesome, and I couldn't help. I mean, uh, there's a number of us looked at each other. Went uh, that should have been the SummerSlam match. <laughs> hmm. um, it what was, was the difference? Really- I I heard it was really good too. What was the difference? Just the psychology, well, or the way they worked, or the way they worked it. Uh, a little bit of both. Um, you know, Randy attacked Brock from behind with a chair, and uh, you know it was no DQ, so that really opened up. You know, some of the things they could do. Um, it was a live event, so there, you know, there weren't tele- uh, television cameras there, and it wasn't a pay per view, which I think Brock definitely gets in different modes for. Um, mm-hmm. He just relaxed and went out there and had a good time. And, you know, I don't know that there if there's many great towns that we've all, you know, performed in. I don't know if there's one better than Chicago. I really don't. Um, and uh, the crowd uh-huh. ate it up. They kept the whole show the whole night. It was, re- it was really cool. Well, Chicago, I think, is pretty much everybody's favorite market because it, it's consistent. It always sells out. And it's the easiest crowd in the world to work in front of. They love they, they wrestling just, in Chicago. Yeah, they, they just stay up. They, they don't burn themselves out. No. You know, some crowds will get burnt out, um, and, and they get tired. Uh, <laughs> that, that's not that way. God bless them. Well, fantastic, man. Well, what else is going on? Anything new that right. we need to know about? Yeah, let's talk about TNA. I don't know what you can share or not share, but lots of rumors and innuendo, as uh, our friend Bruce yeah. Richard would say. What's the like? Uh, supposedly, the WWE even sent out a poll. Would you pay fourteen ninety nine if it meant content from Ring of Honor and TNA? Uh, do you think there's any possibility that WWE winds up with that library, or is that just internet talk? Well, I, you know, if they send out a survey, then they're going to take that uh, research. They're going to take that information and, you know, make a decision. So. I guess my point is they wouldn't ask you if they weren't contemplating. Now, I can tell you, you know, I'm in high-level talks all the time with Vince and Hunter. We haven't discussed it. But, but by the same token, when I'm in with them, we have, you know, like this week, we did three live shows. Right. So, you know, two of them were at three hours apiece. So that's, that's what our agenda is for that day. Um, and, and quite frankly, I wanted to ask them about the library, and I keep forgetting because we're just so busy. Sure. And and now you know. So anyway, I told you guys I had a little bit of time. I got a three fifteen appointment I got to make. Then I got to get on the phone with Vince at five o'clock. I mean, it just doesn't stop. Um, but well, Mike, we're going to let you go and say thank you so much for taking the time. Oh man, thank you guys for uh, having me on. I love to be on y'all show. Man, thanks yeah, for and, having us. And, Is there anything we can plug or promote or anything else you'd like to talk about before we let you go? Uh, no, I'm just I'm really excited to. Uh, to go to, um, I'm actually going to the state Friday night, which is in Thibodeau, a little south of, uh, I think it's a little southwest of New Orleans. My uh, my my nephew 
he, he's really good. I mean, he will stick here, you know what, the dirt for on defense. But this year, he started a quarterback. Wow. And Yeah, and in the second game, he's a senior. In the second game on the next to last play, <laughs> the first, instead of running out of bounds like he was supposed to, he tried to run over two defenders. Collarbone. <laughs> and he was supposed to be out for the whole season in his senior year. But uh, good Lord willing, the creek don't rise. He's been cleared he's rehabbed and he's starting friday night that's so awesome very well that's great well hey yeah. how about this too your eagles are playing real well they should have won the other day but they're still yeah. four and one and how about the birds man the falcons oh, holy cow man. yeah uh, that, that, i'm gonna tell you what julio jones had a game for the ages and you know what he didn't do it by himself because matt ryan had that ball there every time he got <laughs> 503 yards for Matt. Yeah. Hey, I mean, it was, I was there. Remember, I, we were texting back and forth. Yeah. It was phenomenal. God. Yeah, he's taking, uh, he's taking Kettle One. He's taking La Crema. He's taking Miller Light. He's taking I, know, I, mean, it, I never get sick when I get it, man. I just have to. And I haven't drank it a couple of days. I'll have to change that. Or it, it's Wednesday, isn't well, it? Well, that's the problem. <laughs> It, it, it's late, it's ladies' night somewhere. I'll have to find it. <laughs> it's Wednesday, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's ladies' night, five o'clock somewhere. Yeah, man. Hey, Mike. Thanks, right, man. Thank you so much, Ken. Appreciate right, if it. I don't, if I don't see you before, I'm sure Conrad will be in the loop too. We'll be up there for uh, Hell in a Cell in Boston. Okay. Awesome. I'll look okay. forward to it. Thanks, thanks so man. much, Mike. Thank you. Tra- travel hey. safe. Our best to your nephew. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, kid. You know, Rick, it's not every day that you get somebody on your podcast that's that high up within the the company now and a multiple-time champion and a Mm. Hall of Famer and just such an innovator and uh, so awesome to have him take some time with us today. Well, not only that, too, as I've said, you know, Michael, he doesn't get enough credit. I mean, I'm telling you, he uh, is the reason there is is, – music and wrestling today and that's it they're not i'm gonna leave it at that those guys put it together long before the wwe brought it on they had it going on in dallas and all that and he was there with keith mitchell and i mean you know i'm not saying that vince wasn't thinking the same thing but i mean michael hayes was right there he's a very very smart guy and it is one of the, the two or three key guys that um are actually in a position i think to help make key decisions um uh, uh that vince uh what is respectful of that makes sense absolutely yeah so and, and i love him man he's one of a kind and uh, i'm i'm sure sorry this happened with brett i'm sure it'll get all worked out but um you know who knows what goes on life's too short to worry about it and life's too short to miss a great deal from loot crate if you love one of a kind items you're gonna love loot crate They finally tagged up to make the greatest crate in history. It's the WWE Slam Crate. It's their bi-monthly mystery subscription service for fans of the WWE Universe. And now it's ready to order. Their founder's theme is the first, a celebration on some of the greatest firsts in WWE history. The first of its kind, New Day Collectible, a shirt back from the grave, accessories from a special first lady, an insane clothing accessory, and the first card from Austin Aries. Some crates will even have the autographed version and, of course, a special tree to commemorate the first in-ring destruction of its kind. Here's what you need to know. You're going to get these loot crates every two months, and for less than $20 a month, you'll get a $60 retail value in every single crate. It's going to include licensed gear, apparel, collectibles, and those unique one-of-a-kind items you can't get anywhere else. So you have until the 19th, that's a week from today, to subscribe and receive this month's crate. And when you do that, they're going to make sure that you get a great deal because you listen to the Ric Flair show. Just go to lootcrate.com forward slash flair and enter promo code flair to save $3 off any new subscription. But remember, you've got only a week. You've got until the 19th of October. And when this happens, it's over. It's gone. Go right now. Lootcrate.com forward slash flair. What's that promo code, Rick? F-L-A-I-R. Don't miss it. If you love the Ric Flair show, show some love. Go to lootcrate.com forward slash flair. The nature boy is under the weather and uh, school is not in session on how to be the man today. 
So instead, we're going to repeat the last verse. It's the same as the first. Here it is. The Nature Boy, Rick Flair. How to be the man. How to be the man. Will you wake up every day of your life knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are the man. You wake up every morning. You get that workout on to get your mind right, get your body looking good. You put on the most spectacular wardrobe available to you. No matter what cost factor you have, you can always find something nice. You get in a beautiful car that's ultimately the cleanest car of town. You drive anywhere you go. You open a door. Wherever it is, you walk the next 10 steps knowing that you are the man. You don't look around. You don't ask for anybody's approval. You don't ask anybody what they think. You just keep moving. And if you're asking about women, you know when you walk into a bar or a nightclub that any woman you're looking at is thinking to herself, oh my God, is he actually staring at me? Do I have the opportunity? Don't give them an inch. They come to you. We don't go to them. And that's how to be the man. And I'm Rick Flair. It's time for this week in history on the Rick Flair Show. Woo! Brought to you by MidAtlanticGateway.com. Dick Bourne and David Chappell are celebrating the memories of Jim Crockett promotions every day at MidAtlanticGateway.com. Well, I think Bear Hatch's hip might have gone out on him, but now they're just exchanging right hands, and the challenger's got the best of it. As you say, sometimes, Gorilla, maybe the tank has gone empty on Flair. I don't think so. I think he's hurt, Alfred. He's perched up there now. Look out. Superplex coming up. Oh, yes. Oh, what a beautifully. Execution there, so beautifully done. By that Hart. could be the beginning of the end. And Hart showing no signs of anything wrong with his legs now. Now he's going for the sharpshooter. He's got it turned over. And just look at this. Flair's getting up. And he's trying to detract the referee, but he did not Oh, it. he gave up. We've seen history made. All right, Rick, let's get to this week in history. And of course it's brought to us by our friends over at the mid Atlantic gateway. And this is something that, uh, is kind of timely considering we're talking about this when we are after our guests this week and everything that's happened. Uh, we're going to talk about the time Brent Hart won the world title for the very first time. And it's not something that I think gets enough love or recognition. Uh, you've kind of shared the backstory with me in the past, but I want you to kind of share that with everybody here because it is a story that a lot of people don't really know. Uh, the, the date, of course, we should mention was October 12th. It's in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. It's the year 1992. Brett's got the home field advantage. You guys wrestle for 26 minutes, nearly 20, 27. Uh, and then you submit to the sharpshooter to drop the world title. It's a non-televised event. They, t- they go ahead and film it and put it on a Coliseum home video. Mr. Perfect's in your quarter. And uh, they went back and forth. And then ultimately, 
Uh, you submitted to the sharpshooter after a suplex off the middle rope, uh, and that really catapulted Brett. A, a suplex off the top rope? Uh, the middle rope. Yeah. Superplex off the middle rope and then right into the sharpshooter. And this really made Bret Hart, but it's kind of weird that it didn't happen at a televised event. Kind of share everybody, you know, what the backstory for this title change was. Well, going was. back to what I said before, I had wrestled the Warrior two nights before that, and he dropped me on my head in Phoenix. And I got that inner ear problem where I, I had, I lost my balance. So, and I, and I've never, I was never capable of giving Brett nearly the match he deserved that day. Cause I, I literally, I had lost my balance and I just hobbled through the match. Um, he actually carried me because every time I went down, um, my equilibrium was gone and I couldn't get back up fast enough to like feed him. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, Cause I fell down and I, it took me a while to get used to it. And that's when I thought I was going to inherit, get that big Lloyd's of London thing. And then anyway, so we had a match and I, I, I did the best I could, but it wasn't nearly as good a match as it should have been. And I wish I could have given him a better match, uh, because he won the world title and he deserved to get it. So, but that's how it started. And I, um, I, uh, had that darn inner ear thing and it, you know, I didn't go away for six months. Wow. And then. The day that I went to go, I went to the Mayo Clinic with my dad. I went to Duke. I'm thinking about the 500 grand or 750 it was tax free, because I've been paying all that money uh, to Lloyd's of London and didn't write it off, so that if I ever were to collect, I wouldn't have to pay any uh, and pay any taxes on the lump sum. And it was 750 grand. And the day that I went, I'm going to go get it. I woke up and I was gone. I went over literally and banged my head against the wall three times. Wow. I called my dad. I said, Dad, it's not it's gone. It said I just can't tell him I still got it. He looked at me and said, Karma. That's the end of the story. I still rethink that once in a while. Because <laughs> <laughs> everybody else collected Chris, Rude, Boss Man, Animal, everybody did. I, I don't know why. I just but my dad, you know, he was real funny about stuff like that. And, he said, God's giving you this health and be karma for you to go do that. So I didn't. But um, but anyway, getting back, I wish I could have given Brett a better match. We certainly had some good ones after I got well. Um, um, and he was a champion. I was chasing. It was fun. We did real well. Yeah, it's worth checking out if you haven't. Uh, it was a, a Coliseum video release. It's online now. I'm sure it's on the network. Uh, go out of your way to see it. It was October 12th. 1992 hard to believe 24 years ago yeah crazy huh that's this week in history on the other side we've still got ask nature and voicemail of the week uh yeah this week on mlwradio.com out now goldberg is coming to raw page is gone from wwe for 60 days the wwe network flirting with ring of honor and tna content find out all the latest scoops when mr saint laurent teams up with conrad thompson for a special packed edition of the flagship podcast mlw radio on thursday join wrestling historian matt farmer as he talks memphis wrestling territory on the vip only history in the making podcast with court bauer finish off the week with msl and sullivan in the morning talking the business of pro wrestling and what really happened behind the scenes in WCW back in the day. Then learn all about the classic WWF television series, Prime Time Wrestling, on Something to Wrestle with Bruce Pritchard, plus much more. The world of MLW Radio never stops. Go to MLWRadio.com and binge on pro wrestling talk now. All right, I get tweets all the time wanting to know how can we support the show. Well, listen, we appreciate all the support you show on social media. Follow us at Ric Flair Show. But the real way to throw some support behind the show, support our sponsors. And how about at the same time, look good while you're doing it. We're talking about a Ric Flair Show t-shirt. Go ahead and go to RicFlairShow.com. Right at the top of the page, you'll see the merch link. Click that merch link, and it's going to take you to the online store. There's 12 RicFlairShow.com shirts to choose from. That's right, 12. Everything from a Vote for Flair shirt, a Space Mountain Oldish Ride shirt, a Woo shirt that looks like a Hooters shirt that's going to be awesome on your hot wife, the Flair Chop shirt. It looks like the old Andre handprint, except it says Woo. Everybody knows whenever you chop somebody, the entire crowd is going to go Woo. And you're going to go Woo when you see these shirts. 
Go check it out right now. RickFlairShow.com. 11 of these 12 are only $19.99. You pay a few bucks extra for that vote for Flair shirt, but it's worth it. Stimulate your economy, stimulate the show's economy, and support the folks who bring you the show for free every single week. It's RickFlairShow.com and click on the merch tab at the top. If you want to be the man, you got to beat the man. Woo! Don't miss a minute of the Ric Flair Show. Subscribe on iTunes now. In Ric Flair, who you're looking at the man. Woo! Woo! The Ric Flair Show. With an erection that is so rigid, you can strike matches on it. And now, more Ric Flair. Ask Nate, brought to you by MacWeldon.com. Look great and feel great with gear that's better than what you're wearing right now. And get 20% off using promo code FLAIR at MacWeldon.com. If you'd like to ask Rick a question, just tweet using hashtag Ask Nate. And we can ask your question next week on the show. All right, Rick, this week's Ask Nate comes to us from Cody Olive. He's on Twitter at Mr. Clawmaster. He wants to know at Ric Flair Show, what hair products did you use? I must say, you had the best hair in wrestling. Hashtag Ask an H. Oh, man. What did I use all those years? Um, Carafix and um, I'm drawing a blank. But I definitely did have one brand. Carafix and uh, was a conditioner. And um, God, I'm drawing a blank on the other one. Yeah, I've always used very expensive hair products. Um, a number of them. I've tried them all. But, um, oh, man. I've never even heard of Carafix. What is that? It's a, a special conditioner. Expensive. Wow. <laughs> I, I want to say the shampoo was like Matrix or something like that. Um, but I've just always I put a lot of money into my hair. I, 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 do, I do to this day. And, and I'm lucky I have it. I mean, if you think about it. I've been bleaching my hair since 1972. I believe that's 44 years. Does that sound right? Uh, do you have any idea what color your hair is supposed to be right now? Oh, yeah. If I, if I don't stay on top of it, it's still brown, thank God. I, mean, I, I know it has some gray in it, but it's not totally gray. But, um, you know, four divorces, a lot of bleach, man. My hair is <laughs> thinned out a little bit. <laughs> I'm taking a magic pill for it now, trying to get it to come back. <laughs> well, the enjoyment has not gone from this episode yet. On the other side, don't miss it. Voicemail of the week, and it's a pretty funny one. The Ric Flair Show Voicemail of the Week. If you'd like to be the next Voicemail of the Week, just call the Ric Flair Show hotline, 844-RIC-SHOW. Leave your name, city you're from, and your hot take. If you've got what it takes to style and profile on the show, call now. Toll free, 844-RIC-SHOW. Now, here's this week's Voicemail of the Week. Hey, Rick and Conrad. This is Michael Cohen from Chattanooga by way of the ATL. Woo! I heard a story that referee Tommy Young told that Rick and Ricky Steamboat had a match in 1984 where Rick, shall we say, accidentally did a poo-poo in his tights during the match. Hey, did this happen? And if so, what does Nate remember about it? You guys are doing a great job. I'd love to hear the answer. Woo! All right, Rick. Uh, this is something I've never thought to ask you. 1984, Tommy Young says when you're wrestling Ricky Steamboat, you uh, had an accident. What's the story here? I was wearing a uh, pink robe, pink tights, pink boots, Charlotte, North Carolina. He suplexed me, and I had an accident in my pants. <laughs> pink. Yeah, it wasn't pretty. Uh, what, what, what happened? Were you sick? Or did you just not feel good? Uh, or was I it... felt great. I just passed gas, and out came some moisture. <laughs> yeah. Is the that... size of a size of a fifty cent piece for another half hour in the ring. <laughs> uh, Do you smarten Ricky up at that we point? We gotta go home. That stinks. <laughs> so we can't go home yet, brother. <laughs> you kept going. Had to, man. God, it wasn't like a pile. It was just a wet spot, you know. <laughs> uh, is this something that happened multiple times throughout your career? No, only one time. That's it, right there. Wow, how funny is that? Have you ever re been wrestling someone when it happened? No, not that I can remember because, you know, you're right there. It, 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 the aroma is not good. I mean, I'm sure the people in the front row were going, what the hell? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. 
So I really was not ready for you to admit to this. I didn't think this was a real. No, thing. I can't. I can't lie about it. There was nine thousand people who saw it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, this was fun. I mean, the funny thing is, I remember the city. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you were what you were wearing. This 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 night had an impact on you, man. Well, if I've been wearing black tights, it wouldn't have made any difference. But uh, the pink, you know, just spotty. Uh-huh. And, and, and I tried to let it pass it off as sweat, but it was darker than sweat. So, well, we, I apologize. Uh, you don't need to apologize now. This is a great show, and uh, let's get out of here and give some Twitter plugs to our friends. Our guest of honor today was at Michael P.S. Hayes 1. That's the number one, at Michael P.S. Hayes 1. A lot of folks don't know he's on Twitter, but he is, and he is a worthy follow. Uh, of course, you can follow the show anytime at Rick Flair Show. We'd love to have some feedback. Don't forget to tweet us using hashtag AskNate if you have a question for him. Uh, as always, MLW is our host. That is at MLW on Twitter. At MA Gateway is on Twitter as well. If you love the Jim Crockett promotions era, you will love MidAtlanticGateway.com. At Luke Craig. <laughs> Use promo code FLAIR to save on a box of gimmicks you can't get anywhere else and do it before the 19th. They're helping pay the bills, man. If you like the show, please go to lootcrate.com forward slash FLAIR and do the same with our good friends at Casper at Mac Weldon. Don't forget to use promo code FLAIR for Casper and Mac Weldon at Jerome Fisher VO. He's our master of ceremonies, making us sound better than every other podcast around. And of course, at 1FMC. <coughs> Save some money on your mortgage, and uh, let's try to save the nature boy. Rick, I hope you get feeling better next week. Oh, man, I will. Yeah, i got a big weekend coming up. You know about it, but I can't say anything. And uh, very, very excited about that. Of course, I can't say anything, and I, I know you won't, but um. So let's just say Saturday morning, uh, follow you on Twitter. How's that sound? Yeah, that's yeah. good. But check out uh, at Rick Flair, uh, nature boy, on Twitter. Uh, this Saturday, <coughs> yeah, Saturday, not 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 necessarily the morning, but Saturday. So. Yeah, Saturday, and if I'm uh, very excited, if uh, if Rick makes it, it'll be fun. Yeah, I'm. I'm this, I'm going to go out and drink tonight and drink this baby away. <laughs> I love you, man. Have a good day, man. Thanks for having me. I love you too, buddy. You have a great one too. All right, see, you, buddy. Thanks, man. Bye.